my lovelies, I hope you're all well. So today I'm going to do a quick video on uploading JPEG and PNG images to Design Space on a Mac. So a JPEG is a one dimensional image. It's basically a photograph. It will have a background. It's got no layers to it. A PNG is pretty much the same thing, except 99.9% .9 of the time the background is removed. So you will use JPEG and PNGs for a couple of different reasons. JPEG and PNGs are great for silhouette images. They're also great for print and cuts. And sometimes if you really want to use an image and you can't find it as an SVG, then more often than not, it will be available as a JPEG or a PNG. But if you want to use it as a cut, sometimes it takes a little bit of work. Mainly though, they're great for, as I say, silhouette images and for print and cuts. So I've got an image here, which is from a free clip art library. So I'm going to double click it. You can see it's a JPEG, so it's gonna have a background and I'm just gonna save image to downloads. Now the background could be a square, it could be a rectangle, it could be a circle, it could be white, it could be green, it could be multicolored. Like there are so many different JPEG backgrounds out there, um, but JPEGs will always have a background. Okay, so I've saved the image to my Mac and I'm in Design Space, I'm in the canvas. So I'm going to select Upload. And you'll see I've got my upload area here and we've got the option to upload image or pattern fill. So we want to make sure that it's set to image and we're going to go upload image. And you've got the option to drag and drop. I don't do drag and drop. I find it to be pretty much hit and miss. So I avoid drag and drop. I just select browse. I'm gonna make sure with Mac that my downloads folder is selected and I can then select my image and open. Now with a JPEG, you will always get this screen, which is select image type. So simple, moderately complex or complex. You always want to select complex because it will keep the image in its correct form. So if it is a print and cut, you always, always want to select complex. Same as if it's a silhouette or you're going to create a cut from it, you definitely want to select complex. We can then go to continue. Now, if I don't do anything with this, I just go to apply and continue. What's gonna happen is because of that background, I'm just going to get a solid shape. So for my cut image, I'm just gonna get a black square or a black circle, black rectangle, whatever shape the background is. And then for my print and cut, I'm always gonna have that background shape. We don't want that. So I'm going to go back. There are two ways in which you can remove the background. You can either do it manually, which is to use the select tool, and I'm just gonna come in and remove the background like so. And the amount that I remove the background will dictate the, um, the way that the image is. So if at this point we go to apply and continue, you'll see that for my cut image, I've just got the silhouette of my cow. And for my print and cut, I've got the outline, but I've obviously got those colors because it's printing them. Again, if we go to back, I can go further. So I can actually remove more of the background if I want to, just by clicking on them. If I then go to apply and continue again, oh, let me just get rid of that little gray bit there. Now for my cut image, I've got more of a cow shape 
And the same, because I've removed the white and the pink, this is what my print and cut is going to look like. So depending on if you're going to have it as a cut or a print and cut will dictate how much of the background or the image pieces that you remove. Again, if I go to back and I restore my image, so the other way is that if you are subscribed to Design Space Access, Cricut Access, which is their subscription program, you can use the automatic background remover, which is pretty handy. Now, the way that it works is it will remove the background color. It has its pros and its cons because it will focus in on that background color. If it is a large background and the color is a huge part of the image it will remove all that color which is great if you want all of that color removed but if you don't then sometimes it can be a bit hit and miss i'm going to select remove background and it is going to remove all of the white for me so if i then go to apply and continue This is what my cut image will look like, and this is what my print and cut image will look like. So again, depending on whether you want it as a cut or whether you want it as a print and cut will depend upon how much of the image you want removed. I mean, I do not like that as a cut. So what I would do if I was having it as a cut is I would go back, and I would then use the manual tool along with the automatic background remover to then remove these gray pieces and the pink piece so that I've then got something that actually does look like a cow. You can then choose whether it's gonna be a cut or a print and cut. You can give it a name and a tag as well, which is always worth doing. So I would do something like animal or cow. If it's me, I'm probably just gonna put moo on it because that's how my brain works. But giving it a tag is really great, especially if you're gonna bring in a lot of images and you can't remember the image name. Tags are your best friend. So PNGs are, as I say, the same as a JPEG, except the background is removed. So I'm just going to select this PNG file and I'm gonna download it. And it's then gonna download into my downloads. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's gonna download into my downloads. Again, we're in design space. We're going to upload image. We're going to browse. I'm gonna select the folder, because this is the difference between Mac and Windows, is that you can actually go through and select the folders. And I will do a dedicated video on this, but I'm gonna select the folder. I'm gonna select PNG. There is SVG in there, but for this video, we're looking at PNG. And we'll just select any of them. It doesn't matter which one. And open. Again, I always want to select complex image. That's gonna bring it in exactly as I see it. It's not gonna change it. It's not gonna reduce the quality, which is what I need for either cut or print and cut. I want it to be at its maximum quality. So always select complex. And we can then go continue. And we can see when it comes in, when it comes in, thank you that the background is removed. We can see there's no background there. So if we go to apply and continue, oh my goodness, you are slow today. Slow, slow, slow. There's no background. So our print and cut image, we've got the outline and then the colors. And then our cut image, we've got just the outline because with a JPEG or a PNG, once you remove that background, you're only going to get the outline for a cut. So you have to, if you want more than the outline, you have to remove more. Again, I can then give it a name 
and a tag and I can save it. I can select to save it as a print and cut or a cut. I'm going to select print and cut. So I'm just going to do Easter. And for the tag, I'm just going to do Easter print. And then upload. That image is then saved. It's in my design space library. I can, you know, keep it there forever. I can, at any point, if I want to remove it, I can click on the three dots and select delete. I mean, occasionally I go through and do a big cull, but, you know, there's so many images in my saved. I'm, this isn't my normal account. I've got two accounts. Uh, I just have. Uh, so I'm using the clean account today, but my other account, that is, uh, there is a ridiculous amount of images on there. So as I say, when you're bringing in a ridiculous amount of images, the tags are your bestest friends. So in summary, it's really quite easy to bring in a JPEG or a PNG. Don't forget, JPEG will always have a background. 99.9% .9 of the time, PNG will have the background removed. You'll always have it as a silhouette cut as a JPEG or a PNG unless you remove other elements. JPEG and PNGs, for the most part, you're going to use them for print and cut. That's that's kind of what they are. They're a photo. You're going to use them for print and cut, especially with things like printable iron-ons. You can do sublimation with them, so you can do them onto uh, mug presses, onto mug presses you can do them onto mugs using the mug press there's so many options stickers yada 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 the list of print and cut is endless and that's it that is how you bring in jpeg and pngs for mac there will be other videos on how you do it for windows and iOS as well, because they're all slightly different. Uh, but I just thought we'd concentrate on Mac today. If you've got any comments or questions, please do put them in the comments. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that notification bell, give the video a thumbs up. It does help me a lot. It gets me out there uh, and it means I can help you all. And, you know, it's free, so please do it. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.